Good evening and welcome to Plant Based News. I'm Kerry McCarpet. I know it's not necessarily the evening where you are, it's just you can't really start the news with hello, can you? It's a bit a bit informal. Oh, you've got to come in hard and establish some kind of competence. Uh, I'll change this so you can see the. Because if I leave imagining the pictures up to you, you're not going to come up with the good stuff. I don't. No, I'll be in charge of these if that's okay. So, first tonight, Monsanto, have they been right? with their attitude about genetically modified crops. I don't think they've got an official strap line on that, but so far the vibe I'm getting from them seems to be, you know, it'll be all right. Come on, what's everyone worried about? Why is everyone so worried about meddling with the DNA of plants? We'll see what happens and cross that bridge when we come to it. But it turns out Quite a few countries don't really want that to be tested in their backyard. Already Scotland and Germany have banned GM foods from being grown on their land and the latest is that Greece and Latvia have done the same. The problem is people are worried about genetically modified crops um, getting into the neighbouring fields and cross-pollinating with natural stuff. So if you have something like a terminator gene in your corn so that seed can't be replanted because the plant was infertile by design. You don't really want that getting out and causing global starvation. It's bloody all we need, you know. And so you can understand Latvia and Greece's belt and braces approach to avoiding world hunger. Just try not to set off a domino effect that uh, risks everyone's lives. Okay. Now, Veganuary has just recently ended, and so a lot of people have been reflecting on that and what's been achieved. Uh, in fact, Klaus in the Greenhouse uh, said in his notes that Veganuary is very much a thing nowadays, which in a way is the least you'd expect from a tangible concept, uh, that it's a thing. But it's a big thing, though. I think that's the point. 23,000 people signed up for it. And if they officially signed up for it, 23,000, you can imagine how many more thousand just did it on their own. I certainly heard people talking about this in the office, covertly, of course, it careful not to involve me in the conversation for fear of triggering an impromptu um, lecture on IGF-1. But another positive thing, in addition to all the traffic that went to the Veganuary website, something like three million hits in one month, um, was the support from businesses. Pizza Express, uh, Aldi, The Handmade Burger Company, Yo Sushi, and this is a great insight into how we as consumers can just make society better. People find consumerism a bad thing, a negative thing, but it's because we imagine corporations imposing false needs onto us. If we can turn it around so that they're meeting our existing needs, the need for health, for example, uh, that's how we're going to improve things. And it starts with a savvy consumer base, and that's what Veganuary is so brilliant with. It educates people. Uh, speaking of which, which I know they don't, nobody does that on the news. They don't care about the flow of the different stories. It's, you know, global disaster, Donald Trump's hair. I mean, maybe maybe there's a connection, I don't know. But speaking of education... An award-winning pro-vegan horror movie, The Herd, is now available to watch, and I'll link to that below, and it replaces female cows with female humans in the hope that it'll help viewers make the connection, understand the experience of animals a bit better by presenting it in this different way. And, you know, we're going to be people all like, oh, God, why, why do vegans always do this, eh? Like, we know what's going on. No, I don't think we do know what's going on. I think... Human empathy is a bit flawed. If it's not happening somewhere we can see it, we don't really remember it's happening at all. So this practice of reminding oneself and reminding others, this happens all the time, it's happening now, and it's happening to creatures that aren't that different from us. They're sentient as well, they feel pain. I think that's a good practice. Uh, Emily from Bite Size Vegan did something similar a few years ago where she went through the experience of a farm animal, including being branded and everything. And uh, I'll link to that video below too. Sad news in the world of vegan last month, as veteran bodybuilder Jim Morris died at the age of 80. He was one of those people who was always being asked whether he really was 
his age because he had a very youthful countenance. Um, but his health hadn't always been great. In his youth, he subscribed to the idea that you need animal protein to build muscle mass. And he only went vegetarian in 1985. And it was only when he was 65, in fact, in the year 2000, that he went completely vegan. And because he seemed to have some health issues, it just goes to show, don't just cut down on meat, give it up altogether and all animal products. Because he said in an interview once, it was only after I retired from competition that I started considering my health and eliminated what I had over the years identified as the cause of my digestive, respiratory and joint problems, namely all animal sources. I continued having fish on rare occasions as my treat. Age 64, Jim developed a medical condition that sharpened his outlook. In 1999, because of a nerve condition, and you know he was eating fish, and that could be linked to the mercury, don't know, um, I consulted a cardiologist, neurologist, rheumatologist, hand specialist, acupuncturist, chiropractor, and two pain specialists. He's not a man who does things by halves. <laughs> You want to be sure, don't you? Had a brain scan, an MRI of my neck, another of my entire spine, had an unnecessary carpal tunnel operation, suffered vertigo from interaction of medications prescribed by several of the above, and continued to have the problem. The horrific nightmare of such an experience so terrified me that I determined to do everything in my power to never again fall into the clutches of the pharmaceutical industry. I stopped eating fish and all processed and refined products. And that's possibly why he lived to the fair age that he did, in spite of his entire youth being taken up with this punishing regime of, you know, high animal protein diet. You only need to look at the vegan gains that many people are making now to understand the power of plants. Finally, this morning slash evening, and I bet you know this, I bet you already know this, but the public are starting to realize it too, and that's the news story. Supermarkets have apparently been selling uh, animal products with misleading labels that suggest the animals live outdoors when they don't. So they're talking about bucolic scenes, uh, bucolic, by the way, isn't a type of plague, as I had to clarify to a friend the other day. But, um, you know, chickens outdoors, cows in fields and all that, and it's not how it is. I mean, the people who make these labels seem to be the same people who design the set of Teletubbies. It's a bit far-fetched, because, you know, if some of these chickens were set loose on TripAdvisor, they'd be writing some extremely poor reviews. <laughs> the games room's not all it could be. That's it from me for plant-based news. Uh, I'm Kerry McCarpet. Thanks for having me on your computer. I've been going through some of these photographs, uh, you know, with a view to leaking something, but um, it's not a lot there, is it? I mean, maybe if you get better lighting or something. Some of these are quite unflattering.